Hello everybody, I am Anastasia, a portrait and commercial photographer based in Athens in Greece and this is the brand new episode to my podcast named Create and Manifest Your Dream Life, a cozy podcast for all the creative souls out there. As it's my first episode, I want to include a small intro about what it's going to be and how I view it. So I hope you have the patience and gather your warm beverage and let's begin. How everything started. I believe that there is a lot of content out there that is around the philosophy of fake it until you make it. It worked I guess back then when uh, you could just say about yourself whatever you want and people were going to believe it but now the market is so overwhelmed and there are a lot of creators out there and the viewers I believe and the aspiring creators as well are feeling overwhelmed and feel that depressive moments that they cannot do the same and there is also that feeling of maybe not trust anymore there are so many stories about the successful success and now i guess maybe people want something more true or something maybe more behind the scenes of your success story i truly believe that if you really want to achieve something in this life you can do it you just need maybe some a small push some motivation and some and some support out there. Obviously you're talented, obviously you have the required skills for your career, but sometimes we lack that belief in ourselves. So this podcast is going to be dedicated for the aspiring creators out there. I'm a photographer myself, so I'm going to actually give you some examples of from my path based on photography. But if you're not a photographer, it it actually doesn't matter. You can easily adapt all the tips and techniques that are included in this podcast to your creative path as well. It's going to be initially solo episodes with me and later on I really hope we will have some guests here and I'm planning to share with you some behind the scenes uh, stories of me, some success but some also struggles that I have and also to share with you some tips and techniques of how to keep that energy level, of how to stay motivated no matter what, and to ex explain to you that even you lose that motivation in some at some moment in your life, it's okay, and you can always gain it back by doing some inner work, obviously, by doing some activities that you love, besides your profession, I mean, some hobbies that you like, and we are going to discuss some maybe esoteric techniques like meditation, like uh, breathing exercises, like um, neurographic art as well. These are the topics that I touch in my main channel. Here I want to discuss them more in deep. So I am really planning to have uh, uh, maybe an episode dedicated to meditation, maybe another episode dedicated to neurographic art, another episode dedicated more on uh, client communication, on social media, on uh, how to promote yourself online and etc. So this is going to be a mix and match. That's why I call the podcast Create and Manifest because I believe if you want to succeed something, you have to have the hard and the soft skills. After you have to actually act you have to actually do something in order to succeed whatever you wish. That's why I called it create. And the manifest part is going to be actually around how much you believe in yourself. It doesn't matter if you have the support of your family, of your friends. I mean, it would be better if you had it, but if initially they like try but cannot 100% believe in what you want to start doing or in what you are doing already, you have to have that inner strength, that inner peace with yourself that will actually keep you going. So the manifest part, the manifest section is going to be about the, some 
activities about some techniques that uh, I am doing and I will recommend them to you if you want to adapt them in your everyday life. Goal setting as well about how to visualize what you want and uh, how you will end up actually attracting it. So I do believe that we obviously need also to believe in ourselves and in what we are doing. That's why I created this combination. I hope you noticed already how cozy this podcast is, how simple it is. I will allow myself to have some breaks to breathe. I will try to not be harsh on myself when I'm going to edit the podcast because I really want to express my thoughts as they are right now. Of course, I have my laptop here and I have uh, scripted out what I'm going to say, some bullet points. If I want to talk about something here, I want to, and if I want to expand it, I want to let myself do that. So the title of the first episode is, uh, I wanted to do it kind of catchy and uh, maybe clickbait, so you will notice my podcast, obviously, but it doesn't mean that it's not true. How I almost quit my photography career because of social media. It happened to me recently when I felt that probably photography is not for me. So a little background story here so you can understand. I, as a self-employed photographer, I have been doing this uh, for around more than three years now, like maybe three and a half now. And I found myself like uh, out there to somehow promote my services. And I decided obviously to do it online. Instagram was very appealing to me because um, there, there is a lot of room for creativity there and you can post literally your photography work, maybe in, in not the most attractive way because you still have some restrictions in the format of how you can post them. But the point is that you can actually advertise yourself easy now. And plus Instagram now has created a lot of tools how you actually can do that better. But my case was that for like three years now, I have experienced my highs and lows into into creating that online presence and uh, into advertising myself and my services. And I remember when I just finished the photography course that I was taking back then, I was so inspired, I was so ready to go, and I found also inspirational to watch some creators, some photography creators or some other creators that were uh, promoting themselves. And I was following them, I was watching their content on everyday basis and I remember that they are posting a lot actually and obviously they seemed successful in their craft and successful in their business. And before I start, I want to put a disclaimer here that what I'm going to say, it's based on my personal experience and I take the whole responsibility of um, the fact that I almost quit. I am not blaming social media platforms or the creators out there. Obviously, I understand that what happened with me, it's uh, completely like my problem, my issue and maybe my emotional state at where I was back then. And Instagram was just maybe a triggering tool that was affecting me that way. In no way I am blaming anybody or any platform here. So I want to be clear with that and we can go on. I remember maybe I had like five or six creators that I enjoyed like from different countries with different like philosophies of life and they were sharing besides their work also the some of their thought process and their everyday routine. I found it very fascinating and I actually tried also to maybe adapt some of things that they're doing and try to put them in my content as well. And at first, as I mentioned, it was very inspirational and very motivational. So it made me also create content every day. I started to create a lot of stories. I made my profile more adaptive, like for the user, so everybody can find whatever they needed, so everybody can click easily on my website. I was always trying to keep up with the trends as well, like to stay modern. But later on, <laughs> when especially with all those algorithm changes, I found myself struggling with achieving engagement, with uh, even getting likes on my posts, 
on my photography work and that was harsh that started to become overwhelming imagine you post something that you just crafted you polished it you nailed it it looks perfect and you post it and you gather 13 likes <laughs> that's out of the 700 followers that you have and you feel injustice you feel that oh my god is my work not good and you find yourself just being overwhelmed and you see that the creators that you follow the bloggers that you follow they have uh, so many likes they have comments they have so much engagement and you cannot understand why you do not have the same so i felt already overwhelmed by that but later on i was also noticing that they do have students they do workshops they gather like people around them they travel they go to these hotels they get brand deals they get these branding photo shoots they get these amazing clients the high paying clients these high paying clients that everybody's talking about where are they and when you watch this content every day and this content was a lot it's not that they post rarely and i found myself just wondering why i cannot do the same what i lack that i cannot reach their level why i cannot share stories about how i just got a high paying client and then everybody started to sell courses as well i'm talking about the period of maybe five years ago when this all started to become more popular and it still is and i thought oh maybe i need to create a course maybe i need to create another digital product maybe i need to um, put something new into my services rather than just having the photography services and maybe i need to create different sources of income that's obviously something wise that's something that you also need to do there is a point here but when you see that success and you see that you cannot keep up with it it takes you more time to even create another digital product or even to think about a new trending reel and you see that they achieved this this and that and you just created a reel within three hours and you finally post it and it got like uh 20 views then you just won't really give up so i felt that way and i almost thought that okay maybe photography it's not for me maybe it's my style that it's not appealing or maybe it's uh, the lack of uh, followers that i have or maybe i am not that charismatic as uh, the other creators i tried different things i bought courses from the creators that i admired i changed slightly my photography style which i'm happy about now i actually believe it looks much better <laughs> i try to uh, change my perspective into the content that i want to put out there and it seemed that nothing works i had a big downhill having no clients not knowing when i'm going to receive the next paycheck that was rough well hopefully everything is okay i kept up and uh, new clients came a little later but they came i felt like rejuvenated but there were some months throughout the year that i felt that maybe i need to give up maybe i need to just find a regular job and to just have a salary every month and to see from then what i'm going to do next like i was thinking maybe i need to choose security rather than pursuing my dream maybe pursuing that bubble dream maybe it doesn't exist <laughs> then i thought that maybe these creators are faking it because there is that philosophy fake it until you make it and i thought maybe they are faking it maybe they exaggerate about their results just because they want to sell i had other interests besides photography like i had as a hobby tarot reading and i was investigating this area i liked astrology and i was reading about it as well and i even thought maybe that i can become a tarot reader i already uh, practiced a little bit and i can now give uh, some uh, simple tarot readings and i even created a page where i could promote my services like i was almost giving up photography and was ready to go in another area but i soon realized that it was not it was not the photography that has the problem because i would find the same 
problems into promoting myself with the tarot reading or with whatever creative I will choose doing, I mean, as a freelancer, and I would find the same struggles there as well. So the problem was not the photography itself, but the problem was how I view it, my perception of it, and uh, my motivation maybe, and maybe also my laziness, because sometimes I really felt that maybe I'm just lazy, maybe it's not that it's hard, I'm just not putting the amount of time that I have to put, because being a business owner, being self-employed, being... um a freelancer, it requires so much time, so much work, so much effort to create a base, to attract clients, to promote your services, to sign up to every freelance platform out there so you can get your name out there, to send uh, maybe even cold emails sometimes, to create a YouTube channel where you can also create content there and somehow promote yourself. It all requires so much work especially when you're a solopreneur, you don't have like a team working for you in the beginning. I realized that a business owner has to work more than a regular worker. A regular worker, an employee I mean, works like 40 hours a week and they have their weekends off. But a business owner (laughs) has to work every day. And the reason why they can work every day and maybe not feel emotionally tired is because they love what they're doing they actually want to succeed if you are an employee and if you work for somebody else yes even if you love your job and you are genuinely interested in doing it correctly and right every day but in the end of the day you just know at five o'clock or at six o'clock i'm done i will go home and chill and i will not think about work until the next morning but when you are a business owner you cannot stop thinking about your work every single moment i have hard time to watch netflix and to relax i have hard time to just be bored i feel that i I am never bored anymore because i constantly think about oh maybe i can create this real idea oh maybe i need to write a post about that oh here is a cool idea about my next youtube video it's all in my head (laughs) all the time and this can be exhausting but I'm not complaining here I want to say that I'm actually happy that it consumes all my time I want to just appreciate that so coming back to my triggering moments on Instagram when I was looking at those creators and I felt that it's overwhelming as soon as I was logging in into Instagram and I was seeing the the successful success I felt stressed i felt not motivated anymore i lost my passion i thought that i am a loser (laughs) and that uh, i will never achieve what they achieved so i noticed a shift in uh, my ideology of that and uh, and how i felt about it i think several months ago when i thought that wait a minute, obviously they are all amazing and uh, I'm glad for them deeply that they succeeded what they succeeded, but I noticed that whenever they were selling their services or their courses or their digital products, they all used the same selling techniques. And most of the selling techniques are based on emotion and are based on the lack of opportunity that if you don't buy this right now you will never be successful or it will never change your life if you don't this this and that right now and there is always a time frame and you have 24 hours to decide if you want to change your life and (laughs) I cannot talk more about how stressful this is I genuinely want to not use these techniques never in my content whatever i'm going to sell i want obviously to sell online but i don't want to use that i prefer to have low sales rather than using this awful technique i believe if you are creating something useful something beautiful that can be used by other people and actually that other people can learn from you, it doesn't have to be done this way. You can sell your services in a more nice and genuine way. And I decided to just stop following them. 
yeah, I enjoyed their content, yeah, they were inspirational, but rather than me being stressed every time by them, I decided to just <laughs> stop doing that to myself. Why I even do that? When I log in into Instagram, I want to post my content and get out. I don't want to be stuck there for two more hours. So I decided to unfollow everybody who was triggering me in any way. And I recommend you to do that as well. If you're, let's say you are not a creator, but you are just using Instagram or any other social media platform for your personal like use. Uh, and if somebody triggers you, just stop following them, please. Even if it's a person you know, because I believe your mental health is more important <laughs> than the, some misunderstanding that may happen between you two. And if, if it comes to a blogger that doesn't know you, then they will not be notified that you unfollowed them. And you can follow them back several months in the future if you want to. Uh, you remember their names. If you feel that you are ready, you want to see what they're up to and they have their profile open, you can follow them again. Right now, I haven't followed back anybody I unfollowed and I feel good. I noticed a quick shift. I was more consumed by my everyday routine. I romanticized a lot my routine and my everyday habits, how I make my breakfast, how I watch my YouTube videos that I enjoy. I got more into that rather than looking into Instagram right when I wake up. I used to do that a lot and this is so bad. Or before bed and this can badly affect your sleep as well. And I paid more attention to the things that I like to do. I worked more on my website. I thought, what is Anastasia? What is me? What I want to deliver into my content? And I posted less. I posted content less. I created less content in the beginning. I took this time to rebrand myself, to find that inner peace with me. I was uh, like paying more attention to my relationship. I was uh, more into having phone calls with my friends, uh, with my sister. I was uh, going out. Um, I was into other hobbies like gardening and cooking. And I felt more maybe safe also on YouTube. I put a lot of effort into creating YouTube videos for my channel. I mean, long ones and short type content as well. I found that the content that I follow on YouTube, it's not triggering me that much as on Instagram. And it's not the platform, obviously, it's the people you choose to follow and if they trigger you or no, and if they make you actually feel good about yourself or no because all of this is just techniques that people use and some people are not for you like you cannot be friends with everybody you cannot have business with everybody sometimes clients are awful and i'm going to dedicate a episode about that <laughs> as well even the blogger that you see it's not for you it's you are just not their audience and that's okay and how i rediscovered the passion into photography. It happened with my last project, with the 12 Gods project. A little quick, it is based on the Asian Greek mythology. It's about the Olympian 12 Gods and I am recreating them in a modern setup. It's a portrait slash editorial, fashion editorial setup where I showcase each character like Aphrodite, Artemis, Apollo, Poseidon, Zeus in the modern world wearing modern clothes and I have this work posted on my website, on my Instagram profile. I also talk about this at, on my main YouTube channel. I found the passion for photography again and the passion was recreated again for photography. I learned some new techniques and photography techniques and editing techniques. I found that I have now my own style. I don't mean that I created this style. I mean that this is something that suits me. Just believed in myself more. Also, I had um, the nice words from the people that surrounded me. The feedback that they gave me was so nice that this project is interesting and uh, I should uh, send it to magazines and that I, maybe I can create a photo book out of that. And that gave me more inspiration and more ideas for later projects 
and how I can promote better my photography. And I believe that if you feel this downhill and you don't feel that passion anymore for your career, for your profession, maybe you just need a break from it, a break from something that triggers you. If it's social media, I showed you now in my example, it can be easier than you think. Choose a platform that doesn't trigger you. For example, TikTok, for me, it's overwhelming and I rarely watch content on TikTok. Instagram, I use it for my work, so I use it to post and also I watch some other creators. And YouTube is like the chill platform for me. I love it. I can watch 40 minute vlogs or some expert talk or podcasts, but it's something that gives me that joy and <laughs> moment satisfaction. So choose what gives you that joy as well. If it's not social media, it can be obviously something else. We have our hobbies, we have sports, just do whatever you feel like. And I believe that this inspiration for something new will come to you. And if you notice that time is going on and you don't want to do that anymore, that's also fine. I really give myself that right to stop doing photography if I feel like it. Right now, I definitely will continue it, but if at some moment in my life I feel that it's not for me anymore and I want to just keep it as a hobby, I will do that and I will find something else. I'm not afraid of doing that and I believe it's a healthy approach on whatever you're doing out there. Prioritizing your mental health is so important rather than goals achieving. You can make the amount of goals for this year like smaller but better prioritize your mental health because you will notice how actually life is enjoyable if you just appreciate the moment rather than achieving everything within this month or within the, the whole year and you know what we as people have different capacity of what we can consume or of what can come into our life of acceptance i mean capacity of accepting money accepting clients accepting success popularity we are not the same we don't feel the same confident talking to three people and talking to 300 people we will feel vulnerable if we have like a bigger audience around us and we have to talk about our work maybe that's why i like youtube and podcasts now because i feel that they talk to a lot of people but i enjoy the fact that i am alone here and i just have my camera in front of me and i can express my thoughts and you on your end can watch my videos or listen to my podcasts and just enjoy them and uh, i don't feel that stress of just saying something right in front of you so we don't have the same capacity and i believe capacity is something that can be expanded uh, and money wise and clients wise and friends wise and if we also have our rhythm our pace some people can achieve a lot of things by 24 and some people can achieve and some people can start a successful business in their 50s it's really i believe maybe faith and maybe how is your life prospected from the moment you were born also the decisions that you take throughout your life i believe also in that it's not that there is faith and nothing else you can actually decide which path to take and to believe in yourself because we can actually manifest what we want we just have to not sit down and wait for things to come to us and just meditate we also have to work and act and uh, we also need to work our asses off to actually achieve what we want. I believe that will be this episode. As a last advice, I would like to advise you, my dear creative souls, pay attention to what brings you joy, to what you enjoy doing. And it can be a hobby, it doesn't have to be strictly your profession. Because I talk, I talk about that because usually creators love their, pro <laughs> love their profession and it's basically their hobby. But we also need to have something else that excites us, the same as our profession. So pay attention to that as well. And it will give you that satisfaction that you can do something nice and that you can relax at the same time. You don't have to 
stress yourself into doing that perfect because it is just a hobby you know extract from your life something that triggers you in my case it was social media and i decided to rather than deleting social media or my account because it will definitely affect my business I decided to unfollow several people. Maybe for you it is something else. Find what it is and just kick it off your life, please. I was planning to give you maybe some tips on social media, but I feel that maybe I can create a separate episode about that, about how to prioritize yourself and uh, to create some boundaries between you and the people that are messaging you, between you, you and your clients. So maybe it will be a, an episode called maybe social media and communication with clients. So I will create something separate and maybe it will be even the next episode. So stay tuned. Let me know how was this episode? Do you understand me or you felt lost? But I guess if you are listening until now, maybe actually you enjoyed it. <laughs> But let me know, I'm interested, like I will open my door for some criticism and uh, for improvement as well. I want to create something nice that you can enjoy and I will talk to you in the next episode and until then, create and manifest your dream life. Bye-bye.